So let's talk about humans. As many of you know, it's nice to be able to grab a bundle so you can just insert posed humans into your scenes and it makes it look much more realistic. And it's great if you're doing still shots, but now with the advent of EV and tools like my own quick shot, you can actually animate scenes really quickly. And when you have a posed figure there, it's a little bit difficult because it immediately reads as statues. That's not what you want. How do you go about finding animated characters for your scenes? So let's talk about that. Well, I'm at 3D people. Here's a, a batch of just pose people. And you can see the prices are pretty darn high. That's 270 euros for a bundle. Here's one, 293. And some of these aren't even animated. They're just posed people. Of course, some of them are animated and you even pay more for the ones that are animated. Let's look at another website. This is a Render People. And this is one of the characters I've downloaded and used for free in some of my scenes. She's quite good, but if you were to purchase her, she'd be 150 bucks. That's a little bit out of the ballpark, especially if you're setting up some of your own test scenes. And then you can go to the Render People bundles and you can see how much they cost. And they're ridiculously expensive. And these are just posed. They're not animated at all. If you look at the animated ones, you're at $439. That's without even tax. Some of these are really expensive. And so I started thinking, well, what can I do about creating some animated characters that were reasonably priced? So I kept searching and I found these 3D scan store bundles and look at the price on these. And I think I had paid like $40 or $39 for this. For some reason it was on sale, but there's a ton of characters and they actually look even better than some of the ones I showed previously. And look at all these characters. And there are actually some of these in here in the women that have T-poses. So you can actually use them with something like Mixamo as well. And then you can just add all kinds of motions to them there. So what I want to do today is I want to take one of these. And I want to show you how to use a technique that was authored by Ian Hubert. And let's take a look at that real quick. So if we can see what Ian did is he pulled in a scan. And then he went and he put some very basic bones in his scan and then he animated the bones in 2.79 so it's not 2.8 but he did these quick little animations where he's just tilting the head moving around and he's got a pretty lifelike pose and it works pretty darn well and so what I want to do is talk about how to do this I found when I tried to replicate this there were quite a few issues I ran into and I thought it might be something that's, a, that's valuable for everyone else to see as well so let's go ahead and get started and see how this works so we're going to start with this guy. He is male 03. He's part of that bundle that I mentioned. And by the way, I might also say that I am in no way affiliated with 3D Scan Store. I just found this as a great value and thought I'd share it with you. Okay, so now we're in our Blender startup scene. I've got the Blender default cube here. And what I'll do is I'll go in and I'll import the Wavefront OBJ file. And I'll go to male 1, OBJ and import our character. And as you can see, when we move the cube out of the way, the default cube is two meters. He comes in at exactly the right scale. So that's wonderful. And the next thing we want to do is we're going to want to texture it. And I'm going to leave him at zero. I'm now, now I'm going to delete my default cube. I'm going to go into the viewport shading mode for the material preview. And I'll pull this up. And then let's go ahead and start applying those textures to him. So. I'll first go in and know that he has a principal BSDF. And what I'm going to do here is with Node Wrangler turned on in your preferences as an add-on, I will select the principal BSDF and I'll hold the Control, Shift, and T keys down. And it's going to open up a dialog for me. And I'll go back into my folder, up one level, find the textures, and I'll select all of these and I'll say principal texture setup. Now it's not going to do a perfect job for me, but it's not bad. I'll hit the G key and move it around. So I've got my mapping. And I've got some of the textures here. I've got the specular texture and I got the normal setup on him. What I need is the diffuse. So what I'll do is I'll take this frame and hit the X button, delete it, shifty this up and we will go and use file from current directory and go in here. And in the texture, I'll use the color, male color. And then I'll hook this up here so we have the right settings and I'll take this color node and I'll put it right into the base color and now we should be in pretty good shape with the exception that we're going to need to do a little bit of work around some of this a little some of this specular mapping is not correct first let's shade smooth the guy that'll help I'm going to leave this specular the way it is here but I'm going to shift a and add an invert search 
invert and put it here and I'm going to invert here to the color and then to the roughness and that's going to help me out quite a bit more so you can see that looks pretty good on the face one of the problems we have is there's 50,000 vertices on this character and that's a lot in fact that's too many what we really want to do is we want to limit it to about 10,000 if possible so first I'm going to go ahead and do a save and we'll call man 01-01 and there we have them. So this actually looks pretty good. Pretty good start. Now, now that I have them saved, I'm going to use Power Save, which is a really nice free add-on that you might want to check out if you haven't. But I'm going to do a Power Save, and it's going to do Man 0102. So I just made a duplicate of that. And the reason for that is I'm going to have to reduce this mesh to about 10,000. So how am I going to do that? Well, the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to come in here, and I'm going to add a modifier. And I use the decimate modifier and I'm going to try like 0.2 and we'll see that's at 19,000 so let's try 0.1 and we're about 10,000 now let's take a look at them and you can see that yeah it's a little it's a little rougher and if I show the wireframe on them there are a lot less faces than there were overall from a distance that's going to work pretty good I think so I'm going to leave that and I'm going to save it so now I have a high resolution and a low resolution version so next we're going to want to rig this and uh, that's a little bit tricky and I'll explain that here so once we get this done we're going to want to make sure and apply this decimate so that we have our object at 10,000 faces and this will make it easier to work with as we animate okay so the next thing we're going to do is rig this character and we're going to use an armature and bones to do it and I'm gonna tell you right off the bat I'm not an expert rigger or expert with this bone stuff either so I'm going to show you what I do based on watching a few videos and uh, kind of figuring some things out on my own so with our character selected I'm gonna hit the five key and the one key now we're in the front view what we want to do is we want to add an armature and the armature is really kind of think of it as a parent for all the bones so shift a and add an armature and when you add an armature it comes automatically with one bone and so what I want to do is I want to tab into this. But if you notice, we have an object mode, an edit mode, and a pose mode. So I want to actually be in the edit mode, just like if I'm editing the vertices of a box. And when I do that, I'll come down to this, and it says viewport display, and I'll say in front. So that way, our bone will always show up in front. And notice that we can select the bottom, we can select the top, we can select the front. So if we select this, it'll move the whole thing. If we select this, it's going to move it the top and the bottom same thing so I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna just leave it the way it is and just hit the E key like extrude like I'll be extruding a vertice and I'll put that right there and then I'm gonna hit E again and extrude it up to the top of his head and then I'm gonna go across to the side view and I'm going to select this and move it so that it's about straight up and down and this one I think I'll move him over just a little bit and of course this will move over as well and the top right there i'm going to move over something like this so now as i move it around you're seeing it's somewhat close here's here's the back view i think i'll take this again and move it so that it's kind of in the center here now we have our armature set up the way we want it so the male is not yet parented to the armature so what we're going to want to do is select the male i'm sorry first we're going to want to go out in object mode and we'll select the male object and then we'll select the armature object and we will control p we're going to say armature with automatic weights. And what that's going to do is it's going to create vertice weight groups. So if I go in here, I'm going to see for this character, I've got bone one, bone two, and bone are the vertex groups for this. So ideally, I should be able to go into him and basically say, okay, I'm going to deselect everything and just select the bone group at the top or let's go and just select the this middle one and you'll see that that uh, we're not selecting any vertices the vertex groups never did get mapped correctly to the different bones and that's a problem so what I found out is after going through a lot of research was that the actual vertices are too close together for the, the automatic weights to actually work. And so the way I'm going to fix that is I'm going to go back and I'm going to revert 
to our original scene. And what I'm going to do is I am going to add a parrot for our male object and I'm going to scale him way up. And I could use an empty, but I know because I'm going to be creating a kit, kit ops object out of this, I'm not going to do that. I'll just say shift a mesh plane. And I'll tab in that and I'll scale it down something like this. I'll go to ones, select this one and this one. Hit the J key, select this one and this one. Hit the J key. Three key selects all the polygons and then X to delete only the faces. And now you can see that's what we have. And that I'm going to call parent for this. I'm going to take that parent and I'm going to parent our model directly to them. So object, parent, object. So now we have that. Now with that done, I'll look at our object and I'm going to scale it up tenfold. Hit the period key on the numpad. Now we're going to have a lot more area between these vertices. So, okay, so at this point, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to rename this Mela one And with this collection selected, I'll turn off Gaffer because I don't want anything else in here. Shift A, and I'll do the same thing again. And I'm going to add an armature. Okay. So now we want to parent our armature to the man. So we'll do the exact same thing. I'm going to basically click on the man, then shift click on the armature, then right click and say parent with automatic weights. And we'll just let that think for a while. And I'll go back into the man. And this time we'll look at these, this bone. We'll tap in here and we'll say select. And you see that's it's selected all of that. And I can deselect that. Right now we're in the object mode. If we go into pose mode, I can take this top bone and hit R for rotate and I can move him around and you see that his head moves now and all that. So, and if I don't like what it's doing, I will just let go and say Alt R and that'll reset the rotation. And really all I want to do is I'm only going to mess with the rotation from here on out. So the last thing I'm going to do is with this all done, I want to go back out of object mode, parent this to this parent object. So now our stand is the parent. And if I go to our stand and just go one, you'll see that our character now is at the right size. And let's just go into this view and let's go back into the pose mode, which I can do with control tab and I can select this in R and I can move it around as you can tell. So, so that's how we rig the character. And the key thing there is that you're just going to have to scale them up big enough so that you get those vertex groups to actually take. So the next video, we're going to talk about how we animate this character. Stay tuned.